Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, entrepreneurs, one and all of us, to yet another luminary interview. I'm really excited uh, today to introduce you to Rhonda Schur. Now, um, I met her through a, a, a mutual colleague, a mutual friend, um, and uh, have been delighted to discover or land on uh, somebody that really uh, can speak English, if you will, talk, make, get, make sense out of a clumsy and difficult topic. And specifically today, we're going to be talking about how to create uh, leads, how to convert relationships in LinkedIn to new business. So uh, I'll give you all of Rhonda's background here, but Rhonda, welcome. It's going to be a, a fun time here today. Thanks, Steve. I'm excited to be here with you. Yeah. So Rhonda Schur is a nationally recognized, I'm just going to read her bio here because there's so much here that's really, you. so listen, listen to this. You're going to be impressed. She's a nationally recognized expert in business networking and LinkedIn specifically, as I just pointed out. She's the author of, get this, five books, Convert Your Connections to Cash and Relationships to Revenue, The Two-Minute Networker, The ABCs of LinkedIn, Get LinkedIn or Get Left Out, and how to avoid the business card pileup and 52 ways to boost your business with business cards. Uh, oh, actually, that the title is how to avoid the business card pileup, 52 ways to boost your business with business cards. Did I get that right? Um, Rhonda is an expert at teaching CEOs and speakers and entrepreneurs like us. Uh, uh, small business owners, how to leverage LinkedIn and convert relationships to revenue. In addition to be uh, an expert on the topic of LinkedIn, Ron is also a certified face reader. She, by the way, parentheses here, she did a little uh, uh, a session, uh, like about a 30-second session with me and nailed it uh, the other day. Um, and uh, she's also trained in NLP, Neuro uh, Linguistic Programming. Uh, you're going to meet her and, and discover her humor here. She's very interactive in her approach. She's been around this thing, uh, this, this area of expertise, this domain expertise uh, and business in general for 20 years and really has been on the forefront of, uh, of, of what we're going to talk about today. She's getting th given thousands of talks, including clients such as Blue Shield, NAWBO, NAI, NAIFA, Vistage, and many others been on TV. Uh, just, uh, you're just a rock star. What can I say? So welcome. It's nice to be here. You know, yeah. it's funny. I remember when my kids were little and they Googled me, uh -huh. you know, they were Googling all the moms, right? And they were they're like, there's 10 pages on your mom. Is she famous? And my kids went, no, she doesn't even have a job. She just talks. <laughs> I know. Isn't it great though? I have the same, I have the same job. Uh, we, we, it's just uh, awesome. Yeah. Well, you've done amazing. So let's start with this Rhonda. Look, um, none among us uh, recognize that if you're not playing uh, in at some level in LinkedIn, uh, you're, you're being basically um, negligent as a business person. Um uh, but I'm going to confess that I'm in this uh, in this category, and that is as soon as I look at how to do it, how to play, how to be effective, how to make it not be a waste of time, uh, I go in overwhelm like almost immediately. And I've fiddled with my profile, and I you know pay attention to all the little things that come across about you know do's and don'ts and all that kind of stuff. But man, I'm really hoping that today you can give us some intelligent. It, per the title of one of your books, I think, ABCs for what we need to be focused on first and most importantly, and then where that can actually be a foothold to how we use LinkedIn as a lead generator. So let's start with what are some fundamentals that everybody needs to know that we tend to, you know, miss or mess up or not get right that we need to like, you know, here sometime this week, schedule some time to address. <laughs> So, so here's the thing that most people don't realize. People are two times more likely to believe what they read on LinkedIn than any other platform. So whether you have a website or anything else, and I would invite everybody to go out and Google themselves. And yeah. you know, if your name isn't John Smith or Mary Smith, there's a good chance that your LinkedIn profile is gonna show up on the first page of Google. 
Mm -hmm. So if people are two times more likely, then the first thing that they're going to see when they come to your profile is your banner. And if you don't have a banner, LinkedIn gives you one. It's just a plain blue background, right? Boring. Yeah. Yeah. And it's free, Steve. It's absolutely free to put a banner up there. So you can put one that mirrors your website or one, you know, here's what I tell people. If you don't really know what to put up there, put a background of the city you live in, a picture of the city you live in with, you know, your website and your contact information. Okay. The, the other thing that's important is your headline. So you're going to see your name and underneath your name, if you don't put anything there and LinkedIn gives you 240 characters, guess what LinkedIn does? They put your job title. Right. So if your job title is real estate agent at Keller Williams, that's exactly what it's going to say under your name. But here's the challenge. If somebody isn't looking for you, they will never find you. It's like what I like to call the LinkedIn witness protection program. You're, <laughs> I know. you're invisible. You said that in our, in our first call. I think that's hilarious. And, and yeah, yeah. Keep, keep preaching here. So the one thing that I think people can do is, you know, use those 240 characters to tell people with the keywords what it is that you do. If you are, you know, a keynote speaker who does virtual and live speaking, put that in your headline, right? Okay, sure. Um, you know, if you're a commercial real estate broker and you specialize only in tenant representation in the greater Los Angeles area, that's what should be in your headline, not commercial real estate broker for XYZ company. Yes. And the other part of it too, is make sure you put your contact information in. I cannot tell you how many profiles I look at and people have either a website that no longer belongs to them. You know, I did that yesterday with a guy who was a superstar and I clicked on the company and I said, your website's dead. He said, no, it's not. I said, well, the one that's there. And he goes, oh my gosh, that's not even my company. That was two jobs ago. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, the emails that I see, like Hotmail, seriously, you know, you're a high level exec and you've got, you know, Joe Smith's uh -huh. Hotmail <laughs> or Yahoo, right? Right, right, right. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, we still use the phone, believe it or not. And I joke and I go, hey, have you heard about that new app? It's called the phone. Do this. <laughs> and, and the reality is, if you don't want to put your personal cell phone number and I don't recommend that you do. Get a phone number that like a Google number or a grasshopper or one of these numbers that, you know, you can put a really powerful outgoing voicemail on and then you decide whether you want to pick up or not, right. but you are accessible because we all want to, how many times have you called somebody and you go through press one, if you want mm -hmm. the pharmacy, press two, if you want the, no, I want to talk to a real live person that's yeah, in this exactly. country that speaks English. Right? Yeah. 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 So, All right, great. So we got the we got the headline, the banner. Yeah. Uh, make sure the company's there, uh, uh, and and then the headline. headline what's contact that? Contact in headline. Contact, contact info. info. Yeah. And here's another one. Grab your personal URL. So, for example, if somebody wanted to go look at my LinkedIn profile, they would just type in linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Rhonda L. Sure. So every piece of correspondence that I send out, every email always has a hot link to my LinkedIn profile. Why? Because I want to make it easy for people to go there. I don't want them to have to go search. Grab your own URL because if you don't do it, LinkedIn gives you one with a bunch of letters and numbers. Right, right. No, that's great. And I've done about half of those things well. And, and uh, this week I'm going to fix the stuff that I haven't. Well, okay, let's go back to this, uh, to, to what comes underneath your name. Uh, I've heard of uh, opposing and, and differing views on this. Some say, uh, talk about your customer, talk about your client. Some say, talk about uh, something about you that's different or differentiates. Um, and some will just basically say, just, you know, don't complicate it. Just tell them, tell them what, what you, what your business is, you know? Uh, so, uh, I have my own opinion about what's most effective, but I want to hear from somebody that's seen thousands or maybe, I don't know, millions by now, uh, profiles and, 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 uh, by the way, uh, Rhonda also, 
pays attention to how this stuff performs. So, uh, so tell us what, what we need to know there. First thing is do it in first person. And, you know, it used to be that you wrote it in third person, but we don't talk about ourselves in third person. Yeah. And they call it about section for a reason. So, and there's lots of people that have lots of opinions. And what, remember the world has shifted in the last two years. We no longer see people face to face. We're seeing each other on, you know, virtual screens. So before we ever get on that virtual we're gonna go check out the person, find out who they are so that we can develop rapport with them. And in the about section, the first two or three lines are the most important because there's these two little words that show up after the first two or three sentences. Those words are see more. You wanna get the person to click so that they'll open up that about section. So that first couple of lines should actually get somebody, it's almost like your elevator pitch. You know, your elevator pitch is to get a yes, to say, yes, I wanna know more. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. in this particular case, what you want to put in the about section is who do you serve and what are the results that you get? Right. Okay. If you don't tell that. somebody that because they, they will self eliminate. Right. You know, yeah. if you're somebody that I don't know, maybe you find commercial real estate space for business owners. I'm not a business owner that's looking for a commercial space, so it doesn't really apply to me. Right. But if you're, you know, if you're a podcast expert who helps people get on podcasts, I want to keep reading because I love to be on podcasts. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you want to put in there is um, if you can put one testimonial about what somebody else said or a link to where you can find them. A little bit about your credentials. I want to know why I should work with you. I want to know what kind of results people get from working with you so that it's more benefit driven than feature driven. Right. We all buy because of the benefit, not because of the features. Yes. And then the other thing it should have is a I like to put a little bit of personal information. And that's really up to you. Now, if you looked on my profile, I have a little bit of a sense of humor. So and I'm, I'm pretty open. You know, whether you met me on a stage with 5000 people or one person in the room, I'm no different. I'm the same person. So I tell you the story about how I married my husband twice. Right. Wow. I have a husband, a husband, didn't have to change my name. The kids are ours. I put that in there because it, it's something that people are curious about. Not everybody is, you know, smart enough to marry the same guy twice. Right. <laughs> I love the it. other thing that's really important, and this is where I think a lot of people forget, is you kind of put a call to action. You know, I had a mentor um, by the name of Eric Lofholm, an amazing sales trainer many years ago. And Eric said, people move at the speed of direction. Hmm. So if you're in a room and you say, raise your hand, if guess what happens? Everybody raises their hand. Mm -hmm. Well, if you say, you know, if you would like to learn more or have a complimentary consultation, if you'd like to get my free, whatever, if you'd like to be considered to be a guest on my, tell them what to do. If you don't tell them what to do, then it, it just kind of sits there. I love that. That's absolutely, that's golden. And, and yes, uh, you're landing right where I hoped you would, uh, Ron. And so I, I feel like I, I, I might know a, a thing or two after all, but uh, the, the- You know a lot more than you think you do. <laughs> but, the, but the focus on who you're serving and letting people self-select whether they want to know more about you or not, then what I'm hearing you say, which is awesome, is, is, is uh, create curiosity, create a compelling reason for them to go deeper just like we do on our websites, you know, we've got the big giant, you know, uh, header up top that if it's done well, pulls them into the website. What you're yep. saying here is literally the same wisdom. We could even would would you argue that LinkedIn, your LinkedIn profile page is uh, is is really a mini website in a lot of ways. It, it is. In fact, one of my clients is a commercial. Um, he does commercial loans. And he does a, a very specific type of loan. It's a non-recourse loan. Yeah. So what I did on his profile is I put some case studies. And these case studies were really exemplary of the work that he did. And as a result of that, somebody found him on LinkedIn. It was you know, a huge, huge deal for him. Uh -huh. And But for the fact that he had that on there, you know, he might have gotten overlooked. And that kind of brings you down to the next section, which is the featured section. Okay, keep so, rolling. Yep, good. So when you get to the featured section, you have 
probably 15 different things that you could put there, but what people see are really the first three. You know, it's kind of like what the old joke, where's the best place to hide a dead body? Page two of Google, nobody goes there, right? <laughs> I haven't so, heard that, but that's true, yes. So if you think about the featured section, <clears throat> the first two or three things that you put there are what are gonna catch people's eye. So yeah. what you wanna put is the social proof. Maybe it's video, you know, it's a string of video testimonials of people that have worked with you and talked about the benefit of working with you. Maybe it's a case study, right? Maybe it's something educational, but that's the part that really, you always have to step into the shoes of the person reading that profile and answer the questions in their mind because what they really want to know, it's like what Mary Kay used to say, right? Does it work? Is it easy? And um, what was the third one? Um, is it easy? Does it work? And I'm drawing a blank on the yeah. third one. Well, I, I um, stopped using Mary Kay a, a couple of years ago. So. <laughs> but but really, that's really what you want it to answer, right? You know, you have to be able to know who the audience is that you're speaking to. So if you're a job hunter, for example, I'm not the person you should be talking to. I don't right. work with job hunters, but I'll refer you to somebody that can help you. Right. So it's always written from that standpoint. And then I think one of the other things, Steve, that's really interesting, it's hard for people to brag about themselves. Isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? We're not wired that way. Our parents told us not to do that. We, we, yeah, I, I was just going to say that. We're, we're, we're essentially taught that that's a bad form, but keep going because uh, you're going to make a really important point here. About well, here's the thing. If you've won awards, if you've been nominated, if you have certain credentials, maybe you have an MBA, maybe you have a CPA, a JD, whatever it is. If you don't tell people, they will never know. They won't know. Yeah. And if you don't have somebody else speaking about what it is that you've done and the benefit of working with you, then they're left to wonder. And you know, when you jump all the way down to the bottom of that profile and you see recommendations, the one thing that always surprises me is how people ignore it. And there, I see recommendations. It's like, oh, 2009, that was how many jobs ago? Mm. And, or you see they have received 10 and given zero. And it doesn't mean that they're not a giver. It just means maybe they didn't realize, but the greatest gift you can give somebody is to give them an unexpected recommendation on LinkedIn because it does have a date and it does link over to you. Ah. So those are the things that people look for because when I'm gonna go hire somebody, the first thing I wanna know is what was the experience like for other people? You know, Did they get what is being promised? Because it doesn't matter what you say, what somebody else says is a thousand times more powerful. And LinkedIn gives you an opportunity in so many different sections to be able to do that. Yeah. under projects, under recommendations, under rich text media. I love this. So what, what you're, what you're uh, instructing us to do here, Rhonda, is uh, number one, be clear, uh, create curiosity, but also give people, uh, give people meat, give people substance, um, uh, and, and don't hold back with regards to things that we, you know, are proud of, but we may be inclined to, to kind of hold back. Now, if we get all these things right, uh, is that lead generation all by itself or is there something else? Because when we hear, oh, well. Great gosh, question. Who, well, go ahead. Go ahead. I, you got, you got so, that. So let me ask you a question, okay? If yeah. you had this amazing classic car, you know, just... Uh, a car that, you know, every time you drove it down the road, people would just go, can I see that? Can you tell me about that? Whatever uh -huh. it happens to be. <clears throat> you know, people get excited about it, right? Yeah. But if you never took that car out of the garage for a ride, even if it was a Sunday, nobody would know about it. You right. could have the most incredible LinkedIn profile. And unless you are somebody that is so unique that there are maybe just a handful of those people that do that, not going to work. It's not going to generate any leads for you. It's okay. kind of like buying a really good scratch off and you go, oh, I won. This is awesome. Doesn't happen. Yeah. However, you can be proactive. And I think what a lot of people forget, Steve, is to actually tend your own garden. And what I mean by that is if you have 500 or 1,000 connections, when was the last time you ever had a conversation with any of those people? You mm -hmm. connected with them, but you've never talked to them. 
And the way that I recommend that you can really create leads is by reaching out to the people you already connected to and inviting them to just have a get to know you call. You know, it's not the spray and pray. I'm not selling you anything. I just want to get to know you. And in that 30 minute conversation or that 20 minute conversation, you want to know the secret sauce of what you say? Because that's where people get stuck. Yeah, fine. Tell us. Okay, so Open this is lid. this is really golden, all right? This is this is what right, I get share. Your, get your get your notepad out, folks. This is golden because this is what I share with my high level one on one clients. So in that first fifteen minutes, I ask typically two questions. First question I ask is, "Hey, Steve, tell me about like your latest win, the greatest things that's happened to you in the last few weeks." Love now, that. I don't care if that's your you know your niece and nephew came to visit that you haven't seen, or you went on a vacation, or you got an, it doesn't matter. I just want to celebrate with you, okay? And then the second question I'm going to ask you is, I'm curious, what keeps you up at night? Now, I'm not talking about your snoring spouse and your crying kids, but I want all the barking dogs. I want to know what keeps you up at night. You know, like if I could help you in any way with a resource that I have, what keeps you up? Because what I'm asking you is, what's your pain point? Now, I might not be the pain point. It might be, oh my gosh, I have a LinkedIn profile. I don't know what to do with it. It might be, I'm trying to find an assistant or I need a new accountant or I would love to get on more podcasts. Guess what happens? They're inviting you to be the expert and give them a resource. So I would say, oh my gosh, do you know Steve Daly? Let me make an introduction. And then what happens next is they ask you the same questions. Yes, yes. Right? Love and it. it may or may not lead to business, but at the end, if they say, well, I'd like to know really more about what you do. The response is great, but this isn't what that call is about. So let's set up another call and I'm happy to do that. And I'm happy to share with you what I do. Today, I just wanted to get to know you. We've been connected on LinkedIn. I just wanted to know, and you know, I know a lot of resources. How could I help? Yeah, I, I love that. I, I think that's that's incredible. So that's the, the, so we have our we have a, a better uh, profile page that we're actually inviting people into that we already are connected to. Well, and you're, we're you're reconnecting is what you're reconnecting. Doing. Yeah. And then and we're inviting an authentic conversation. I love the way you asked that question too, by the way, uh, the, the, the thing about what keeps you up at night, you, you threw in some humor. It's kind of a cliche kind of question, but when you, when you address it like you did or some version of that, I think it, it does actually, uh, land very authentically. And um, I can see having a great conversation off of that. Well, somebody said to me, Rhonda, what keeps you up at night? It's I'm looking for the VA, the perfect virtual assistant for me. I wish I could find somebody. And you know what? People would say, oh, have you tried this? Do you know so-and-so? Right. And, you know, Stacey O'Byrne is one of my clients. She's who I learned the NLP from. Stacy, I always give credit where I learned something, right? Stacy says, Make your ask, A-S-K, bigger than your butt. <laughs> I know. You, you said that in another conversation that. we had. I love it, too. I think that's perfect. Get, tease it out just a little bit for those that might miss it. So I, I, what I teach people is, you know, four words that everybody needs to know. And those four words are, I need your help. So if I don't ask you for help, and I think in our conversation, you told me about this amazing show. And I said, well, Steve, I'd love to be a guest. How do I apply to be a guest? Uh -huh. If I didn't ask, right, then this conversation might never have happened. That's because right. if, I, if I had a but, oh, but I don't think that I'm really the right person for his show. Well, if I made that bigger than the ask, you know, when my daughter was very, very little, my kids are now 30 and 32. But when my 32 year old, I used to say to her, no. And I'd say to her, Stephanie, do you know what no means? And you know what she would say? Yes, mommy, that's the word on backwards. <laughs> right? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? There you go. Yeah. Uh -huh. But the reality is that so what? Somebody says no. That's okay. That just brings me closer to the next yes. You know, if you don't ask, then you're never going to get. Mm hmm. I love it. And that's really the secret. So you can ask people to jump on a call with you. And if they say no, that's totally okay. They're probably not the right person to talk to. 
And you also asked to connect with people. How many organizations are you in, in networking groups, and you've never reached out to those people on LinkedIn and say, hey, Steve, you know what? We're both in XYZ group. It would be an honor to connect with you. I'd love to get to know you better. You accept. And then I extend an invitation for, to get to know you better one-on-one. -on -one. If you say uh, no, okay, guess what? Maybe you don't like me. That's okay. You that's know what? Okay. Yeah. I have kids. You can't insult me. There you go. Right? <laughs> no, this is it's wonderfully simple and, and makes perfect sense. There's a ton of things I'm sure you can you can uh, uh, amplify and, and tease out for us, but I have, I want to get this one question in before we wrap. Uh, I think probably three or four with Gus up to six times a week, I get approached by somebody on LinkedIn wanting to connect saying, uh, and, and this just kills me saying some sort of a random thing, that doesn't even have really that much to do with me. So either they're using automation or they're just like copying and pasting and not, not really paying attention. But what they're wanting to do is invite me to connect so that they can start to pitch me on their program for how they can generate leads on LinkedIn. How, first off, what do you, and I, and I, I already kind of know the answer, but what do you think about that approach? And, uh, you know, what do we, what, what are we looking for that's different than that, that really can work? So that's the spray and pray approach. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just putting it all out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really, I always say LinkedIn is a really, is a platform for um, creating relationships. It's not a sales platform. The sales right. will always follow. So what I recommend that you do is before you send a connection request to somebody, Number one, make sure your profile looks the way that you would be proud to have it look, right? Yeah. And secondly, look at the profile and say, hey, Steve, I noticed that you also volunteer with Big Brothers Big Sisters, or I see that we both share X number of connections. We're both in the same city. We both went to XYZ University. Let them know, you know, oftentimes I will reach out to somebody and I'll say, hey, I noticed that you also follow so-and-so and like the same posts that I liked. Mm -hmm. So they're going to want to connect with you. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you just send them a thank you message. Hey, I so appreciate you taking the time to, you know, accept it. And then you wait a little while, maybe a day or two or whatever. And then you invite them and you choose because our most valuable asset is our time. So you choose who you want to get to know and you do it in a way that's with full integrity because it's not about, hey, I want to sell you my program. No, it's, I want to get to know you. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. And so, so these folks that, uh, that are using whatever automation or spray and pray, as you call it, um, uh, you, you didn't come right out and say this. I just hit uh, ignore. Okay, great. I was, <laughs> I, 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 I hit ignore and I yeah. did have one, which actually was kind of funny. I had, um, I looked at the guy's picture. He looked about 22, 23 years old. Oh yeah, you know, you can, yeah that's the other thing, can, yeah. You can tell how old they are because they actually put the year they graduated, right? <laughs> and he he basically said, Rhonda, I'd love to be able to help you with your retirement planning. And, you know, all of your, and I, I actually wrote back and I said, seriously, you are younger than my children, don't know me, and you want me to get financially naked with you. Yes. Uh -huh. You know, um, and I actually said to him, I'm happy to give you a, a complimentary consult on how you might better use this platform. Nice. Oh, yeah, of course. That's great. Good, good uh, pivot. Never heard from the guy again. Yeah, but of course not. It's always amazing to me. Um, and, and you know what? It's true. Sales is a numbers game. It always will be. But who do we really do business with? People that we know, we like, and we trust. Right. It's relationship driven. That's why I call it relationships to revenue. Yeah. I've been with the same state farm person for over 40 years. Why? Because I'm getting such a great deal? No, because of the relationship and the way I'm taken care of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Folks, uh, international best-selling author, Rhonda Schur, that has a ton of insight, expertise, and uh, results in this uh, domain. If you didn't already frantically pull out a piece of paper and a pencil, you need to re-listen to this session and uh, 
uh, she just gave us uh, stuff that we'd all be willing to pay for. Uh, so uh, this has been amazing, Rhonda. Where can we find out more about what you're, you know, what, what the, you got more stuff. You got a lot of stuff. So. I do, actually. Um, I where, very, where do we go? Well, there's a couple of different places. You can always connect with me on LinkedIn. So it's linkedin.com forward slash IN and then my name, Rhonda L. Schur. Um, if you really want to learn how to generate two to 10 appointments a week, I have a masterclass called Posting the Number Four Profit. So it's posting for profitmasterclass.com. And um, here's the secret little code, okay? Okay. If you put in the word now, N O W, you can take $100 off. So it's posting for profit, the number four now.com. And then you can also go to um, posting for profit.com forward slash, um, I believe it is posting for profit masterclass.com forward slash gift. And there's a free book, 52 ways to leverage LinkedIn. So you can Very get good. that there as well. Okay. I love that. Well, we'll put those link links in the show notes and, uh, uh, that's generous. I appreciate that very much. Absolutely. So Rhonda, you're, you're a delight. You, you, you have a wonderful sense of humor as, uh, as your bio says, but, uh, even more, uh, you're, um, you've got this stuff nailed and I can tell, and it's, it's really refreshing to, to get some clarity here, lift the fog and, uh, man, just keep doing what you're doing. It's, it's, it's fabulous. Thanks. It's been an honor to be here with you. And I'll leave you with my favorite line. If you're not LinkedIn, you are left out. <laughs> I love that. Well, folks, we're going to wrap it up here with that on that note. And uh, truth be truth. What's that phrase, Rhonda? Um, truth be told. No. Um, anyway, she just told us the truth there. If you're not, if you're not on LinkedIn, you'll be left out. So uh, uh, again, re-listen to this session, uh, stay tuned for our next one. And until we meet again, uh, strive on, drive on and thrive on to entrepreneur excellence. Have a great day. Hey, thanks again for listening. Look, if you're interested and serious about applying the wise insights from luminaries like you just heard from, I wanna invite you, challenge you in fact, to check out the Entrepreneur Excellence Alliance. Just go to entrepreneurexcellence.com. You'll see a very inspiring uh, video that we put together that outlines our manifesto. And then a button will link you right on over to all the assets, the resources, the tools that we've compiled. You see, the Alliance is a team, a tribe, a community of entrepreneurs just like you that are striving to truly attain excellence, their lifetime best in every aspect of both business and life. Peer collaboration at its best, world-class coaching, abundant resources. You need to check it out, entrepreneurexcellence.com. And we'll see you over there.